Lord, we thank you for Cheryl and this opportunity to go to South Africa. Oh my gosh. We ask, Lord, would you make a way where there seems to be no way, would you make a way? And Lord, we just ask that you'd show Cheryl and uh, provide what's needed or just provide other places of ministry. And Lord, we're just going to trust you. And we're going to believe in you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, you may be wondering what's going on today. Because it's not my birthday. It's not Laurie's birthday. Um, and I haven't worn this outfit, excuse me, this suit and tie in forever. Because I just don't do it anymore. And this week, as I've been praying, and I have to tell you, um, I told Laurie, I said, I would love at the end of church to, to pray in the parking lot for the presence of God to fall. And Jim, he's praying for my legs to get better. And I said, well, the one you've been praying for is better. The other one's in trouble. It, it, it hurts like crazy. And I was up half the night. And, but I wore this today to put Satan on notice that I'm not going to back up, sit down, or go anywhere else than right here. Because this house belongs to the Lord. And so I don't know what I'm preaching today. I'm just here. And I'm looking for Kermit to give me cue cards as to what's next. <laughs> Kidding. And be able to understand that when the Lord begins to do stuff, you, you open your hands like this and you say, Okay, Lord, I want to receive. And, and I found myself worshiping this morning and I had my hand in the air, and I'm like, oh gosh, I'm in a Baptist church. I shouldn't do that. And <clears throat> the Lord's like, would you just cut it out, okay? Just trust me in this. So one of the things that happened this week is I began getting phone calls from people who were like, hey, can I come hang out with you? Can I come see what you're doing? And I'm like, I'm, Lord, I'm just up here at Crossroads Church in Lake County. And it's just in the edge of Lake County. And, and the Lord's like, would you hush and just let people come? So you're going to get to experience some people in my life, in this place, on a series of Wednesdays and Sundays in the, in the coming months. Now, we may have to take up a special offering to cover a few plane tickets. Or we may have it in the budget. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to find out. So this Wednesday, I want you to show up. We've been talking about evangelism. Are you not going to be here? It'll be open. No, it's going to open back up. This place is going to be open. I'm going to chase the people out of the parking lot who are doing the striping and the... Surfing, surfacing, right, Kermit? When are they going to be done? In time for us to have church Wednesday night. There you go. Park in the grass. <laughs> there you go. The Park at Broken Ore and just walk up the street. <laughs> okay? Now, I'm just telling you, we got to get out of our comfort zones. And, and I've been excited because Wednesday nights, we've been increasing in number. We were running about 10 or 12, and, and, and now we have a, a live speaker, not a TV speaker. And, and son, a Wednesday night, we had 17 here. Wow. It was awesome. So we need to have the rest of you here on Wednesday night. And we're going we're gonna to pray about how do we start stuff for high school students, young people, children, 
on Wednesday night. Because I want this place to happen. Amen? Amen. So, this Wednesday, I'm, I'm stepping out. And I have, I have invited my, my good friend, Ed Villarreal, to come. And because I... <clears throat> we talked about this. Don't, I'm not going to hurt you. Um, we, we talked about this. You know what this is? This is the book of salvation, right? This is the book of praying for people. And, and as I prayed over this, the Lord was like, get Ed to come. He'll fire the whole place up about sharing their faith and, and about these people. So, this Wednesday night, Ed's going to be here. I'm going to be here. And y'all are in trouble. So show up. So we pray and we seek God and we ask God to move. Now, I can't remember everything that I do in a week. Therefore, I have to write it down. So, I was having a, yet another phone call this week. And I have, I have two people in this world that I just love their names. And they all go together. So the one is in West Palm Beach. And his name is Robbie Christmas. <laughs> That's his name. He's a pastor. He's a great guy. He's an evangelist. But then there's another guy over at Winthrop Harbor, First Baptist Church. And his name is Bob Frost. <laughs> so one of these days, I want to get these two guys together. I mean, it'd be so exciting. But Bob Frost became a friend when I preached over at First Baptist Winthrop Harbor way back, way back. We've been here six years. And so I'm talking to Bob this week and he says this sentence that just blows me away. And that's probably why I'm, I'm wearing this suit and this tie and I am praising God this morning. And this is, I wanted to read because I wrote it down when he said it. He said, Take control of the crossroads. I mean, that is so powerful. Amen. I mean, that's our calling. Take control of the crossroads, which says, nothing in, nothing out, except for the glory of God. Amen. And, and how, how do we do that? We begin to pray. We begin to seek the Lord. So, I sought the Lord. So we're going to bring... Ed in on Wednesday night. And then a friend from Atlanta called me. I don't know many Brazilian missionaries to America. But James is a Brazilian missionary to America. I've been to his house. I've met his mother in Brazil. I know he's real. And all he's doing is developing prayer ministries across the south where he lives in Atlanta. And he called me. He said, hey, can I come to your house? I said, sure. You're always welcome. I said, why don't you come and teach on prayer with our church? He said, oh, I'd love to. He said, I got a, I got a ticket on Spirit. I probably can come for free. Can I come? I, I said, yeah, let me ask Kermit and Jim and, and just kind of make sure we're all lined up here. So, Probably towards the end of this month, James is going to show up and teach us on prayer. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be awesome. He loves the Lord. And, I mean, James is almost famous, right? What's the name of that show? There's some show on Netflix about designing cakes that float and move and, and do things and... 
his wife's brother is one of the bakers on that show. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't beat that. And, and then, towards the end of, probably sometime in November, um, we're going to invite Daniel Amari to come and join us. Daniel lives here in Chicago. Daniel is an expert on what Muslims believe and how to share Jesus with Muslims. I think he's going to have to come in for two nights. And I'm not trying to plan something. These are just people that I'm talking to. And, and Daniel is, is an expert. He knows. I mean, he grew up over there. He, he's from Amman, Jordan. So we'll, we'll bring him in. And then the, the last one is, is, is got to be a Sunday morning thing. Uh, this gentleman, his name is Ken Weathersby. Ken was an executive vice president for our Southern Baptist Convention on our executive committee. Now, Ken is my brother from another mother. So he, he is a great preacher. He is, in, and he's going to come and preach on kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Because we need a dose of kingdom. And so he, he's going to show up. I mean, he, he, he called me the first part of the week. And he really just called to say, hey, can I pray for you? Because, you see, I, I didn't think this up. This is the Lord saying to us, this corner is important. And we're going to send in some troops who are going to help us. And we are going to stand up for Jesus in this building and on this corner. Amen. 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 Now, I have a sermon to, to preach. And it's in Zephaniah. And when we... When we look at Zephaniah, we are also going to look at Matthew chapter 4. And if you look closely, we're only about 30 pages apart between Zephaniah and, and Matthew 4. And we'll just see how far we get. Oh my gosh. And I'm just going to jump around. So, Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 12. It says, At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish those who are complacent, who are like wine left on its dregs, who think the Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. Now, Zephaniah 1, 12, what we're reading is a part of Jesus' Bible. This is what he grew up with. He grew up with the, the minor prophets. He grew up with the Pentateuch, the first five books in the Bible. And he learned all of this, and then he shares later on throughout the book of Matthew. But when you read this, doesn't it say, I am going to punish those who are complacent? Oh my gosh. How many of us, I won't ask for a show of hands, how many of us have had times of just being complacent? And it's saying here, the Lord's going to punish us for being complacent. 
for just kind of <clears throat> being okay with life. And, and what he is looking to do is to stir us up with the gospel. He's wanting to help us to see the truth. <coughs> Excuse me. And it says at the end of that verse, the Lord, they think the Lord will do nothing, neither good nor bad. <coughs> I tell you, I hadn't had this many problems <laughs> in a while. People think <coughs> that God's going to do nothing. I, I want you to know, if, if you lift up your eyes right now and look across the landscape of our country, God is up to something. Amen. I've never seen the lights, and I don't know why, every week, what now this is the third or the fourth week, I've, I've brought up the, the importance of changing our abortion laws in this country, and, and here, what, is, what is Texas up to? I mean, they're just standing firm that, that this is wrong. There's going to be one heck of a firestorm. Mm -hmm. And then if the Supreme Court gets into it and they make a decision, we, the people of God, have better be praying. Amen. Praying for, our, for those who honor the Lord. Amen. And so, Zephaniah, this minor prophet is saying, you better get off your complacent backside and you better recognize that God is up to something and He is going to do something to make a difference in this world. Amen. Boy, that was really good. I had to work on that one. Do I get an amen? amen. <clears throat> there we go. Amen. If we recognize that God is doing a mighty work, we have the choice to join Him. Or we have the, jo the choice to just lean back and watch. Yep. You know, I don't want this world going to hell in a handbasket. I want this world to recognize that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Because if they don't now, they will later. Yeah. Right? Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. And Zephaniah has it right. He's saying, don't mess around. God is up to something good. Look at chapter 2, verse 3. <coughs> Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, you who do what He commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. Seek the Lord and humble yourself. What does that mean? What that means is too often we try to do things ourselves. And, and I really believe in this church, the Lord is telling me that it is not my job to do everything. Nope. Amen. It is our job to work together. Amen. And I really believe that we should be praying for Brother John. I'm serious. Amen. I think towards the end of his ministry, he got so beat up by the power and the darkness in this community that he was just wiped out. 
and he had to quit. He had to step down. Now you may you may hear me cough, you may hear me all kinds of stuff. It it Satan has just backed his truck and parked it in front of me. But you know what? I may I'm just not going to stop. I'm just not going to stop. I'm going to continue, and I'm going to trust in the Lord, and I'm going to pray for those who have been hurt, like Pastor John. He, was a, he is a great man of God. And we should pray for him. And we should encourage him by notes and letters and phone calls. And uh, I, Candy shared this morning that sounds like they're going to join uh, a church today, which is fantastic. They're going to join, I believe it's Meadow Ridge. And uh, that's fantastic. That's over there by where they live. And... But well, we should be lifting them up. That if we seek the Lord and do what He commands, there's no greater joy. There's no greater joy than seeking after and doing what the Lord says. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's keep going. Go to chapter 3, <coughs> verse 5. I'm just picking out a few verses. <clears throat> I challenge you to go back and read. It's only three chapters. Chapter 3, verse 5. The Lord within her is righteous. He does no wrong. Morning by morning he dispenses justice. And every new day, he does not fail. Yet the unrighteous know no shame. I mean, what a great verse. Morning by morning, he is handing out justice. He is working in our lives, in the lives of people around us. I think... See, what happens when we, we don't read these little books in the Bible that are early teachings of how to follow God is that all of a sudden, all we can think of is the physical. What can I do? How can I do it? How can I accomplish what needs to happen? When this is saying, morning by morning, God is giving out justice. Therefore, morning by morning, I need to be seeking God. I need to be asking God, what is it that I can do to join you in this work? How can I see the miraculous hand of God? I mean, how do you think Jesus felt? He got up every morning. He was excited to work with a bunch of boneheads who were called disciples. And he experienced things that were not normal. I mean, the, the woman at the well, what does she do? She shows up by herself in the middle of the day. And what does Jesus do? Can I have a drink of water? And she's like, uh, this is not how we do it here. But that was, that was Jesus. He gets in a boat with a bunch of guys who are afraid. That's really weird. When these are old, seasoned fishermen, they shouldn't be afraid. And, and a storm comes in and they're afraid. And, and Jesus is sound asleep in the back of the boat. And they wake him up. And, they, and what does Jesus do? Don't you want to be there? When he, he stands up on the back of the boat and just goes... Peace be still. And the waves. Nice and calm. See, that's what... I, I don't want to live that life for me. I just want to live that life for me. Because that's so exciting. I mean, it's so great to be able to walk with the Lord 
And, you know, when you are praying and walking every morning with the Lord, stuff starts to happen. Now, you, you're going to get attacked by Satan. That's just a given. But, you know, no power has overcome who we are and what we do because we trust in the Lord. We trust in the name of the Lord our God. So, I've been praying for years about planting a church in Huntley. And just due to the, here goes the Lord, right? I mean, he starts doing stuff. And we get up yesterday morning and Laurie gets a text from a friend at work and says, hey, we're going out on our brand new boat over on Lake Geneva. You want to join us? I mean, what do you say to that? But where? Right? And so, <clears throat> we were like, but our grandkids are going to be in Huntley at the park there. Decal or De Deacon. I can never say that. Thank you, Jim. Uh, to the park. Say it again. Deak. Deak Park in Huntley. And so we swung in there, saw the grandkids, watched them play for a little bit, and then we're going to go to Lake Geneva. And... I'm talking to my granddaughter, trying to get her to come over, because she's just running around. And I look up, and there's a young man. I mean, this park is full of young people, with little babies and little kids. And, and they, they're, they're all carrying Starbucks cups, because that's what they do. And, and all this stuff, and I'm just like, this is weird. All these young people moms and dads at this little park and then this guy comes walking down the ramp and I look up and he's got he's got a book open and as I watch him come down the ramp I'm like what and I realize on the front of the book it says experiencing God and I know what that is it's not the workbook we've used in the past, but it's a book version of experiencing God. And so here is a guy who is reading experiencing God. How, how often do you run into somebody at this park called Deep Park in Hotley, and he is seeking the Lord. Now, my plan, you know me, was to catch him and to talk to him about the book. But I had two grandkids and just forget it. It's just, they just, you know, they go everywhere. And I didn't get to talk to the guy. But it was, it was like the Lord was saying to me, don't you dare give up I'm planning a church in Huntley because there are people in Huntley who are spiritually hungry for me. I'm sorry. There, there is a gentleman who stands on the side of 47 in front of Deep Park on a daily basis with his Bible, waves his Bible at the traffic as they go by. <clears throat> And he's been there for a year or two, off and on. Have you met him? No, I've talked to him a couple of times, I said. Yeah. Okay. We're going to have to go meet him. <laughs> Why not? I'm serious. We should, we should go, what's up? Why are you doing this? You see, it's an almighty, all-powerful God who wants to bring change to Chicagoland, and he wants to do it his way. Therefore, we got to get up early, and we got to talk to the Lord, and we got to let him lead us. And he will show us. Verse 9, chapter 3. Then will I purify the lips of the peoples, 
that all of them may call on the name of the Lord, and I love this part, and serve Him shoulder to shoulder. You know, <clears throat> the one thing Satan wants to do and is doing with the church, all of the churches, the believers in Jesus, let's just say in Lake County, is he's taking away that ability to stand shoulder to shoulder. Because he's creating conflict. Churches don't talk with churches. They're, they're so worried about their own little place that they are not standing like an army. See, if, if we got all of the churches that believe on the name of Jesus in Lake County to begin praying together, we would see a mighty army. And there would be nothing to, that could stop what we're doing. And the, and the promise in verse 9 is that the Lord is going to purify our lips so that all of them may call upon the name of the Lord. Wow. And then verse 17, and we'll jump to Matthew. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to say he will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. The Lord is mighty to save. But the Lord is also mighty to encourage. Now, I, I, I noticed with our <clears throat> leadership team and, and thinking about next year, there's a particular Sunday where we all are supposed to tell folks what we feel called to do. That's fantastic, but let's be sure and ask the Lord. Yes. Let's ask the Lord what He wants us to do. Because if we are just doing stuff to do stuff, it's not going to do anything. Amen. So, <clears throat> the, the Lord is mighty to save, and, and what I love is that last picture that He longs to rejoice over us. Can, see, <clears throat> what does the world do right now? It's pulling us down. It's telling us, oh, you can't make a difference. Oh, you're just a Christian. What's wrong with you? Get out of the way. But here it's telling me that the Lord, the God of, the cre of creation, is going to sing over me. Doesn't that make you just kind of want to snuggle up somewhere and say, Lord, would you just sing over me? Amen. There's a, I don't know if you're familiar with this um, musician, his name is Dennis Jernigan. And Dennis wrote a song about how the, the Lord sings over me. We'll have to get that soon. But you know, even for Dennis, who has sold millions of CDs and music, and da da da, you know, he's, he's fighting with early stages of Parkinson's. And he's like 62. And, but I still think he's singing that song. Just to say, Lord, whatever it is that comes my direction, it's okay. I'm going to trust you and, 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 and I'm going to listen for you as you sing over. Well, as we, if you turn over to Matthew 
chapter 4. I'm also going to ask you to turn to Revelation chapter 12. I, I, I can't get around this, this verse. Now, I really think that Matthew 4 is fulfilling what is, is spoken of in Zephaniah 1, 2, and 3. And when, when we start into Matthew 4, what is, what is Jesus doing? In Matthew 4, he's fasting, right? And he's preparing for ministry. And, and then what happens? Satan, the devil himself, shows up. And just ruins the picnic. I mean, Jesus had it going, and all of a sudden Satan's like, hey, wait a minute, i got some temptations for you, can you follow me? Well, before we look at those temptations, I want us to go to Revelation 12, verses 10 and 11. Because I, I want us to have biblical foundation for dealing with, with the interruptions of life by Satan himself. Revelation 12, verses 10 and 11. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of his Christ, for the accuser of the brothers who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurtled down. That is powerful. But how is the accuser of the brethren hurtled down? Verse 11. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. There are times where we only, over, we only overcome the power of the evil one through, one, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb. So there's going to be times where you need to cry out, Lord Jesus, we ask that your blood would be poured out on this situation. I, I pray that the blood of Jesus is just all over this sanctuary, all over this parking lot, all over this corner. And then he says, and by the word of their testimony. And for me, my interpretation is, that is the word of God, the testimony of the Lord, that we speak with power and with might. Amen. If you are trying to overcome darkness, you do it with light. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. So we overcome darkness through the blood of Jesus and through His Word spoken over those that we are working with, over places that we are, and we stand firm. So if someone says to you, you don't look so good, it's like, oh, praise God, I've had worse days and I am trusting in the Lord Jesus. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen. So we need to speak against 
that which is coming against us. And there are going to be times for all of us where we begin to go, I, and I, I feel terrible. I just feel awful. This is not working. I'm talking, it's time to start applying the blood of Jesus and it's time to start quoting scripture that we might stand up to the wiles of the enemy. Amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> put that in your, in your box of tools. Revelation 12, verses 10 and 11. Then go to Matthew 4 and let's recognize that Jesus has been fasting for 40 days. And now Satan shows up. Verse 3. If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Now, where was Jesus born? Bethlehem. Bethlehem is the house of bread. So Satan is saying to Jesus, turn these stones into bread. He is asking the man who was born in the town that was known for being the house of bread. And he, Jesus, who said, I am the bread of life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. What arrogance and what stupidity does Satan have in his questioning of Jesus? Do you see the, the, the divine struggle? And Satan's like, oh, turn these to bread. Jesus is like, man. How stupid are you? I am the bread of life. I don't have to turn anything into bread. I am the bread of life. You see, we need to, to recognize that who we serve is greater than the one who comes against us. I mean, what is the little famous verse in, in Psalm 119 in verse 105 thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against God what does it say in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 the word of God is sharper than any two edged sword because the bread and the word are synonymous and so he is saying to Satan, would you just go sit down? I'm not going to do what you want me to do. And see, that's part of our problem. When we have a difficult time and, and someone is tempting us and we're like, oh, what should I do? Should I listen to them? Should I do what they want me to do? And the Lord Jesus is like, you know... Just kick them in the teeth and let's move on. You're, you're wasting time trying to decide if this is right or wrong. Because if it's in the Word of God, we know it's right. Then he, he says in verse 5, I'm, I'm going to jump down to verse 6. If... Don't you love these questions? If you are the Son of God. Wait a minute. Jesus knew He was the Son of God. Jesus knew He had all authority in heaven and on earth. Against the we have to recognize who use the word of God and use it for their own purposes. 
And there was never a purpose that this verse was designed for Jesus to be tempted to jump from this high point down to the ground and prove that he was the Son of God. And what we need is to recognize Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus can do whatever he darn well pleases. He can jump down. He, he can do whatever. And when Satan comes to us, says, what are you doing here? Why are you here? Why are you sharing Jesus with this guy? He's going to think you're crazy. Why, why are you caring for people? And our response is, man, Satan, you didn't get it when Jesus was on this earth. You don't get it now, so would you get out of my way? Then there's one more. Verse 8, he took him to a high mountain. And this is not about jumping down. This is about all of this I will give you if you will bow down and worship me. I mean, there are times where we, we want the easy way out. You know, we want God to, to give it to us. Or we want Satan to, to give us this abundance of things. You know, I, I, would, I would rather have a morsel, a little piece of bread from the hand of Jesus than a whole loaf from Satan himself. So when we look at this verse, what does Jesus say? He says, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then it says, what happens? The devil left and the angels showed up and began to minister to him. When was the last time you got to hang out with a bunch of angels? Where they showed up to take care of me. Now, I'm, I, I can't tell you all my stories. Maybe. But there have been times where I have been cared for by what, by what I believe is an angel. Because... there was no other way but to say, Lord, I, I, I got to have your help in this situation. And, 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 and in this situation with Jesus, he says to Satan, Amen, be gone. And that's what we need in this place. We need to hear Jesus say, Away from me, Satan, for it's written, Worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. Now I believe the Lord Jesus wants complete control of this place. I believe he wants to move and work in all of our lives, and all of us are here for a reason. Whether we are saved or we're not saved, the Lord wants to use all of us. And he wants to set us free. And he sets us free when we allow the words of Jesus to say that we are going to worship the Lord our God and serve Him only. We may be 
small in number, but it really doesn't matter. Because when we take you and me plus the Lord, that's all we need. You and me, or just forget me, just you and the Lord. And that's all we need. But we need to stand together, shoulder to shoulder, and say, just say, yeah, no place in this place. Because we are going to serve the Lord. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we are so grateful that your word never ends. And our need for you never ends. And Lord, we just pray that you would have your way in this place, have your way in our marriages, in our school, in our work, that we together might see your mighty hand upon this place and that this would become a place of revival. Starting today. In the days to come. And Lord. We surrender. We give our temptations to you. We give our fears and our worries to you. And Lord. Would you. Heal us and show us how to serve together. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.